No writer wants their work to be shunned, but the award-winning Israeli author Dorit Rabinian had to face this very issue. Just two years ago, when her critically acclaimed novel All of the Rivers was banned from Israeli schools. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, first of all, tell us a, a little bit about this book and why it made such big headlines throughout this country. Well, uh, this is a, a novel that uh, depicts a relationship between an Israeli woman and a Palestinian me man meeting overseas in New York and going through the harsh winter of exile uh -huh, in America. Uh, they come to explore one another's identity and as seem to be a danger to the Jewish identity, according to the Ministry of Education, they come to realize how many similarities there are between those two nations living in neighbor one to another uh, and sharing the same. So this is interesting because this book was supposed to be in schools here for, for high schoolers. Very much like my two right. previous novels, yeah. Right. And and for whatever reason, it caught the eye of the education minister, and he said for, for its for its uh, literary qualities. For its literary qualities. Now, I mean, how how did you react to that? What was the feeling, and and why do you think that this story, more specifically, uh, was targeted? Of course, I was overwhelmed. I'm still overwhelmed by the fact that I live in a democracy, and I was uh, educated uh, with very liberal uh, values uh, of universal um, towards this literature. I mean, it's a work of art. It had become now a symbol to the threat over the freedom of speech in Israel because so many changes that our country and our democracy is going through. Um, I think, to be honest, the argument stated in the report by the Ministry of Education found this book to be, and I'm quoting, a danger to the Jewish identity because it might uh, encourage the young readers to be assimilated up or what we were hearing about demogra demography. Um, that, th that those couples, uh, th that this couple, the, mm -hmm. the, the relationship between the Israeli and the Palestinian in New York in my novel might encourage them to get involved romantically um, with Palestinians. It, it, it's, it's very interesting that this happened and, and it's funny because there was almost an opposite reaction. The second your book was banned, it became even more of a hit in the country because all of a sudden everybody wanted to pick it up and understand what was happening here. Why is this not appropriate for our children to be reading? Now what has been, um, you know, the... Well, I, I think I just want to understand kind of what, what that means to you. What do you make of the culture institutions right now that exist in Israel and kind of how they're treating literature and, and what do you plan for your future books? Would you change anything? No, I don't give them the pleasure, <laughs> the, the indulgement of interfere with my artistic ambitions. No, it, that it's, that has nothing to do with the government. The government has nothing to do with our spiritual um, essence, uh, beings, worlds, uh, it, it's literature and, and politics, they, they don't even brush. It's just that when p politics finds literature, the magic of identification, as it's been suggested in my work of art, to be a danger to their ambitions, to their brainwashing the, 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 the community, the population, that there is no other, there is no neighbor, there is no s other um, entity that we're living among. Well, here's, here's my question for you. You know, your story was really more about a love story between a, a Palestinian and, two and an Israeli Jew. Two, two individuals. individuals. Right? So it wasn't, um, it wasn't political, per se, right? It's, it's, but, it's, it's all to do with identities, but and what identities should, is so, a political issue. So the question is, you know, how should the Israeli government be treating books that necessarily don't or they don't necessarily it's show none Israel of the okay. Ministry of Education's business. <laughs> I mean, there's a saying by Federico Fellini that every censorship is an ad campaign. It's an ad campaign sponsored by the government. And really, I was privileged enough to enjoy this bad reputation given to me by the Ministry of Education and had gained many, many copies sold. Yet, I would trade those copies sold and this best selling record being. Um, broken any day for living in a stable democracy that my values and my ground that the world we're living is much more 
accurate to the way we feel towards it yeah. and or expect it to be or know it to be. Um, Israel is being changing so harshly and so rapidly that uh, as artists... Well, I mean, I, I still think we have a democracy here. It's not fair to say that there's no democracy here, but yet, obviously... Yet those steps yeah. taken by the current government are threatening this freedom of speech and so many other liberties that we enjoy or we consider ourselves to be uh, reflecting in our da daily life that I should be... I think it, it's the threat makes us more uh, responsible to keep it safe. Well, here's my question for you. For those of our readers who do, in fact, want to read your book, where can they find it? Oh, it's all over. This, it was just, just released in the U.S. Uh, by Random House. It's uh, all over the bookshops and on, on Amazon or anything. All right. Well, thank you so thank much you for so joining much us, Dorit. And uh, we'll be looking out for your next book. Thank you. <laughs>